Johnny Crawford, the beloved star of The Rifleman, has ended his life after years of ups and downs, from the height of fame to difficult challenges. What made the child star so attractive, and what hidden corners of his life have not been told? Let's find out. What childhood experiences shaped Johnny Crawford into a global star? Johnny Crawford, born on March 26, 1946, in Los Angeles, California, seemed destined for the world of entertainment. His family had a rich artistic heritage. His mother, Betty, was a talented musician, while Johnny's grandfather had a relationship with the renowned composer Irving Berlin. Growing up in such an inspiring environment, Johnny was destined for a brilliant career in the arts, capturing the hearts of millions of fans. Los Angeles provided Johnny with a unique childhood, where music and performance were an integral part of his daily life. His home was filled with the sounds of his mother's violin, creating the early sounds that shaped Johnny's future talent. In addition, the creative atmosphere of Hollywood, the city he called home, ignited in him a strong desire to reach the limelight. At the age of six, Johnny's potential was discovered by his Sunday school teacher. Seeing a special light in the boy, the teacher encouraged Johnny to develop his talent. Inspired by this early support, Johnny stepped on stage for the first time, immersed himself in rehearsals, and discovered the magic of acting. Church and school performances became the first stages where he honed his skills and developed a burning passion for the art. Johnny learned that each performance was not simply entertainment, but also an opportunity to connect with the audience, an ability that would later become the hallmark of his Hollywood career. There was something very appealing about Johnny Crawford, his natural charm and ability to convey emotion through his eyes. As he entered his teens, Johnny realized his greatest passion was acting and was determined to pursue it. He began auditioning for television and film roles, eager to make his mark in the entertainment industry. His first big break came when Johnny won a spot on Disney's groundbreaking show, The Mickey Mouse Club, with thousands of kids vying for their dream roles. The competition was fierce, but Johnny's talent was undeniable. During his audition, he wowed the casting directors with his soulful rendition of Johnny Ray's Cry, selected as one of the first Mickey Mouse people. Johnny was on the cusp of a promising start in the entertainment world. The Mickey Mouse Club was a global phenomenon, combining music, storytelling, and education in a way that captivated children everywhere. In the show's first season, Johnny appeared in 16 episodes, where he not only showcased his singing talent, but also honed his growing acting skills. For Johnny, being a Mouseketeer was more than just a job. It was his first step into the world of professional entertainment. The lessons he learned about time, intensity, and the nuances of television production laid a valuable foundation for his later career. Although the show eventually downsized, leading to Johnny's departure, the experience only strengthened his resolve. After leaving the Mickey Mouse Club, Johnny continued to pursue acting, moving from child roles to more complex, mature roles. He was no longer just the Mickey Mouse boy with a bright smile, but now a real actor, ready to take on challenging roles. One of the impressive roles during this period was in the video stage production Little Boy Lost, which helped Johnny to be recognized as a promising young talent in Hollywood. Johnny's career flourished as he continued to take on roles in popular shows such as The Lone Ranger, where his performances received love from audiences and praise from critics. Being cast in a television show filmed in color technology, Johnny had another special achievement in his career. Over the next few years, his face became familiar on screens across America, with nearly 60 appearances by the time he was a teenager. These years solidified Johnny Crawford's position not just as a child talent, but as a rising star in the entertainment industry. In his diverse acting career, Johnny Crawford has shined in the Lorda Young show and the Sheriff of Coaches, showing his ability to bring depth and sophistication to his characters. In particular, the role of Manuel in the Sheriff of Coaches helped Johnny show his fierce acting, affirming his name in the industry. In addition, Johnny's appearance in The Restless Gun kept the audience watching his every move with excitement. As Johnny continued to make his mark with excellent roles, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity came. That was the role of Mark McCain in the famous ABC Western series, The Rifleman. This role not only marked a turning point in his career, but also changed Johnny's life forever. 
helping him affirm his position in television history. With the Rifleman, Johnny had the opportunity to delve into family issues, morality, and the harsh challenges of life in the American West. The journey to win the role of Mark McCain was not simple. The casting process for the Rifleman was intense, as the director sought a young talent who would perfectly play Lucas McCain's son, played by Chuck Connors. At just 12 years old, Johnny made a strong impression during his audition with his natural yet powerful presence, qualities that set him apart from the other candidates. The connection between Johnny and Chuck Connors was immediate, creating a strong bond that would become the focus of the entire film. Working alongside an experienced actor like Connors was a life-changing experience for Johnny. Connors became more than just a colleague. He became a mentor to Johnny, helping him gain insight into the complexities of acting and television production. Their off-screen friendship made for great on-screen chemistry, and the father-son relationship between Lucas and Mark McCain touched the hearts of audiences. The strong yet loving father figure was a breath of fresh air, different from the usual father-son stereotypes in westerns at the time, bringing a unique emotional depth to the show. When The Rifleman premiered on September 30, 1958, the film quickly conquered audiences across America. Unlike many westerns of the time that revolved around gunfights and wild landscapes, The Rifleman stood out with its humanistic plot and everyday emotions, focusing on personal challenges and the strong family bond between father and son. This profound approach made the film a resounding success, helping the film become a cultural phenomenon that resonated with audiences of all ages. The Rifleman maintained high ratings from 1,958 to 1,963, becoming one of the top television shows during its run. The Rifleman stands out in the world of television westerns for its authenticity in storytelling, depth of characters, and ability to tackle difficult social issues such as racism, justice, and the challenges faced by single parents. These elements set the show apart as not only an entertaining story, but also one with deep and meaningful social implications. Critics have praised The Rifleman for its realistic depiction of life in the Old West, its family relationships, challenges, and personal struggles. At the heart of the show is the relationship between Lucas McCain, played by Chuck Connors, and his son Mark, played by Johnny Crawford. This father-son relationship becomes the emotional core of the show, serving as the basis for many of the stories throughout the seasons. Mark is not only Lucas' companion, but also a representative of maturity and profound life lessons. Adult audiences easily find rich themes of morality and humanity in it, while for children, the character Mark is a model of adventure and the desire to explore. The success of The Rifleman comes not only from its profound script and excellent acting, but also thanks to outstanding details such as the famous theme song. Composed by Fred Steiner, the song's strong and recognizable melody has become an indispensable symbol of the show, at the same time reflecting the spirit and context of the era the film simulates. The Rifleman has gone through five seasons, producing a series of memorable episodes, each containing stories of great depth and influence. One of the notable episodes is the trial when Lucas McCain is wrongly accused and faces a morally challenging situation. The episode is not only about proving Lucas' innocence, but also opens up a broader discussion about fairness, justice, and the importance of standing up for what is right. It is a testament to the Rifleman's sophisticated storytelling style, which is not just an entertaining film, but also a thought-provoking work that reflects on profound social issues. Another memorable episode of The Rifleman is The Young Englishman, in which Mark befriends a young English boy who is shunned by the local community due to prejudice. This episode not only highlights the value of friendship and loyalty, but also vividly depicts the negative effects of discrimination and prejudice. Stories like this demonstrate the Rifleman's commitment to confronting and reflecting on deep social issues while remaining engaging and accessible to audiences of all ages. Like Mark McCain, Johnny Crawford is often faced with challenges that push the character's courage and morality to the limit. These moments not only reflect surface conflicts but also lessons in maturity and maturity. Each episode contributes to Mark's development, allowing viewers to witness his growth from an innocent boy to a young man with difficult life decisions. This created a strong bond with the audience, especially those who had been with Mark since the beginning. 
The Rifleman's impact was not only profound in the television world, but also had a great influence on Johnny Crawford's own life. In many later interviews, Johnny expressed deep gratitude for his time on the show. He said that the Rifleman was like a family to him, with Chuck Connors, who played Lucas McCain, being both a friend and a teacher, a mentor, not only on the show, but also in real life. Johnny shared, Connors helped me a lot, not only in work, but also in life. He treated me like an adult, even though I was very young, and made everything a lot easier than I thought. Their friendship and bond not only brought touching moments to viewers, but also became an important factor in the success of the show. The lessons of honesty, integrity, and loyalty that Lucas McCain imparted to Mark are not just lines of the script that Johnny Crawford has carried with him throughout his life. He has shared that these values have helped him grow not only on screen, but also in his personal life. The values that Lucas McCain taught me are values that I carry with me to this day. Johnny said, showing the profound influence the role has had on shaping him as a person. After growing up and trying his hand at other fields, such as music, Johnny Crawford always looks back on the Rifleman with pride and gratitude. The show not only helped him build a solid foundation in the entertainment industry, but also taught him valuable lessons about his career and life. He feels fortunate to have been a part of a show that has had such a huge impact on American culture and left a lasting impression on audiences. However, Johnny Crawford's abilities extended beyond television. Even as the Rifleman solidified his position as a TV star, Johnny kept branching out, becoming famous in cinema and music as well. Few actors his age had Johnny's degree of flexibility, as he has shown after the Rifleman in his effortless shift to other parts. Rawhide, a popular Western series in which he co-starred with Clint Eastwood, was one of his early jobs after Rifleman. Johnny demonstrated his range when he portrayed a vulnerable and courageous little kid in this episode, who was thrust into a perilous circumstance. Rawhide was only one of several films in which he established himself as a talented young actor with versatility. Johnny had a gift for more than just westerns. He played the difficult character of a soldier on trial for murder in one of his famous guest appearances on Hawaii Five-0. Johnny was able to showcase his acting versatility in these roles, demonstrating that he was equally at home playing emotionally charged, sophisticated characters as he was playing the innocent, naive Mark McCain. Johnny appeared in a one-hour special episode of Little House on the Prairie in the early 1970s, co-starring with the late Great Burl Ives. The flexibility of Johnny was on full display during this performance, which not only brought him new fans, but also introduced him to a whole new demographic. During this period, Johnny's film career was also thriving, playing an American Indian youngster with a unique bond to a wild horse. He appeared in the exciting and distinctive film Indian Paint. Johnny was able to go further into issues of identity and belonging in this part, which added to his tremendous body of work. El Dorado, starring John Wayne and directed by Howard Hawks, was one of his most famous cinematic roles. Johnny solidified his position in the Western genre and showed his ability to compete with Hollywood's Allisters by portraying a character whose sad demise was pivotal to the story. Johnny had other interests than performing. Johnny Crawford's other interests started to blossom as he experienced tremendous success on The Rifleman. The song became a national anthem for teens the moment it came out and quickly rose to the number eight spot on the Billboard charts among the youth of the early 1960s. Cindy's birthday was a favorite due to its infectious melody and youthful lyrics, which beautifully portrayed the naivety and happiness of first love. This, though, wasn't a fluke. It was as if Johnny had hit upon a secret formula for continued musical success, an unbreakable bond with his devoted fan base. Following the success of this song, he went on to release a string of successful single that further cemented his position as a pop phenomenon. Johnny kept winning over listeners after Cindy's birthday with singles like Your Nose is Gonna Grow, which reached number 14, and Rumors, which reached 12. The power of Johnny's voice to convey profound feelings via music was on full display in each of these songs. Among the many teenage heartthrobs on the market, his music stood out because of its luscious, skillfully constructed compositions. But Johnny's special talent for capturing the innocence and optimism of youth was what set him apart. He wanted his music to do more than simply make people happy. He wanted it to transport them to a simpler, 
more innocent era to Johnny's devoted listeners. His music meant more than merely passing time. They transported us to a bygone era and brought back the wonder of our youth. It took a lot of poise and perseverance, but Johnny managed to juggle the demands of his acting and singing careers, driven by a profound passion for the performing arts. He deftly balanced his duties on the Rifleman with his flourishing music career during the height of his success. Johnny kept his enthusiasm for both crafts strong despite his hectic schedule. With the same zeal and commitment, he continued to record songs, play live, and shoot episodes of The Rifleman. Johnny's agility as a performer was on full display throughout his live shows. His charm and stage presence enchanted viewers as he seamlessly blended acting and singing. He went on tours that further cemented his position as a revered figure among youngsters of the time, and he became a sought-after performer very fast. The Johnny Crawford Orchestra was born out of Johnny's desire to take his thriving music career to the next level. His passion for classic music, especially that of the Roaring Twenties and the Great Depression, was able to flourish as a result of this endeavor. With authentic arrangements and performances that caught the essence of the era, Johnny and his orchestra took spectators on a journey through time by doing extensive research and delving deeply into the history of the era. With each note he played or sang, Johnny demonstrated his unwavering commitment to his art. His passion for music was evident in every performance, and it had a profound and enduring effect on the entertainment industry. Even if Johnny's speed went down with the years, his love of the limelight never did. The music never returned to his life. No matter how far he progressed in other domains, Johnny Crawford, who had a successful acting career in the 70s and 80s, returned to the big screen in a big way in the 90s. He had always had an unquenchable need for acting, and his return gave him the chance to reacquaint himself with his followers while rekindling the fire that had propelled them from his boyhood. At the same time, Johnny dove headfirst into the cowboy lifestyle that had always meant a lot to him which included rodeo and other similar activities. When Johnny appeared in the 1991 TV movie The Gambler Returns, The Luck of the Draw, he was bringing his career full circle, back to the genre that had characterized it in the beginning. Johnny was able to demonstrate his decades-long expertise in the field in this western. The enthusiastic reception to his portrayal of Abe proved that Johnny has Tremendous untapped talent that the entertainment industry might benefit from. Johnny persisted in seeking out acting roles during the subsequent years, especially ones that cater to his love of westerns. During this time, he had several important parts, including that of Emmett Dalton in Bill Tillman and The Outlaws 1995. Johnny was able to reconnect with the business and his fans with this part and others like it at conventions and other gatherings. He would often recount stories from his days as the rifleman in wax nostalgic about television's heyday. Johnny was deeply involved in rodeo in more ways than one. As a result, he was able to maintain a firm grasp on the heritage that had formed his personality. Judging events and sharing his wisdom with future generations of cowboys brought him great happiness and fulfillment. Johnny considered rodeo to be more than simply a pastime a mirror of his character and the principles he had acquired in real life. It was an integral aspect of his identity. As Johnny became older, he thought back on his diverse and extensive career and the things he had learned. He frequently addressed the need to be authentic, the perseverance needed to make it big in the entertainment industry, and the necessity of self-improvement in the arts, sharing his knowledge with the next generation, coaching budding performers, and giving back to the business were all important to him. Many of Johnny's admirers were left to wonder if they would ever see him again when he removed himself from the limelight in 1999. However, Johnny's passion for his work remained unwavering even when he was not around. After an unexpected absence of more than 20 years, Johnny returned to acting in 2019. He had an appearance in Bill Tillman and the Outlaws, later known as The Marshal a film based on the true story of a tiny Oklahoma community when a film studio recruits Bill Tillman for a disastrous silent film gunfight, with a performance that brought back all the feelings his fans felt for him. Johnny paid tribute to his legendary role in The Rifleman in this film. Both Johnny Crawford's on-screen and off-screen lives were characterized by a sense of rhythm and harmony, 
as the leader of the Johnny Crawford Orchestra, a delightful antique dant that brought the past to life in the most captivating way. Johnny found refuge and joy when he wasn't performing or competing in rodeo competitions. After only a few appearances at the Beverly Hills Art Directors Guild Award ceremonies, the orchestra became famous, released to widespread praise. Sweeping the clouds away harkened back to the Roaring Twenties and the Roaring Nineteen Thirties in terms of musical style, reissuing the album in 2012 due to its immense popularity ensured that Johnny's enthusiasm for classic music would live on in the hearts of listeners of all ages. Johnny Crawford had offered so much happiness to spectators as Mark McCain and as a musician, but who was he behind the scenes? Do you think his real life was just as exciting as his on-screen character, or did he prefer the quieter things in life? In Johnny Crawford's private life, two significant relationships impacted his path in and out of the spotlight. Charlotte Harrison, the lady he Wednesday for the first time, was an influential figure in his life when he was first becoming famous. They tied the knot in 1959, while Johnny was still basking in the glory of the rifleman. They were fortunate to have four children together, and Johnny owes a great debt of gratitude to them all for enriching his life, despite the pressures of his growing profession. Johnny derived joy from the ordinary joys of parenthood, which he valued much, but, as is typical in the glamorous and fast-paced Hollywood industry, the demands of juggling a successful job with family life eventually became too much. The stresses of juggling a family with the obligations of the entertainment industry were too much to handle. By 1972, Johnny and Charlotte had been married for 13 years when they decided to divorce. This was the start of a new phase in Johnny's life when he would have to deal with the challenges of being a single father while pursuing his acting career. Johnny was alone for a long period after his divorce, focusing on his career and his children. He was so focused on supporting his family and advancing his job that the thought of falling in love again seemed far away. But surprises are a part of life, and Johnny was reconnecting with Charlotte Sanko, his high school love. During their time together at Hollywood High School, Charlotte and Johnny enjoyed a hopeful and impressionable courtship. But as Johnny's career took off, they went their separate ways. However, destiny reunited them in 1990. It felt as if no time had gone when they rejoined after years of separation. They re-established the friendship they had lost in their teens and continued to grow closer to one another over the subsequent five years. With Johnny's proposal to Charlotte on Valentine's Day in 1995 and their subsequent marriage, a new chapter brimming with love and security began in their lives. Their marriage was solid because of the mutual regard, understanding, and shared history that existed between them. Nonetheless, they were unable to produce children together. The happy couple settled into a picturesque Hollywood Hills home built in 1927. Their house mirrored their appreciation for the little things in life. There was music playing, and the presence of the rescued animals made everyone feel more at ease, away from prying eyes. It was a tranquil haven where they could savor one another's companionship and peace. There was more to Johnny's wife Charlotte Samco, now called Charlotte McKenna Crawford, than meets the eye. He could always rely on her as his companion, confidante, and rock, even though she was married to a famous actor, Johnny. Charlotte opted to keep a low profile and avoid the spotlight. Johnny, however, remained a revered figure in the entertainment business. Their partnership was built on her quiet strength and unfaltering support which gave Johnny the stability he needed after a career filled with ups and downs. The diagnosis of Alzheimer's illness in 2019 brought about an disruption to their tranquil lives, which had been quiet up until that point. It was not only Johnny and Charlotte who were shaken by the tragic news, but also his innumerable followers who had idolized him ever since he was a child star. Even though Johnny's memory and cognitive abilities began to deteriorate as cancer gradually took its toll, Charlotte remained by his side and provided him with unflinching love and support throughout the sickness. The reaction of the general population to Johnny's diagnosis was quite overwhelming. A number of messages of love and encouragement were given from both fans and other performers. A GoFundMe effort was started by Paul Peterson, a close friend of Johnny's who had previously worked as a child star. The goal of the campaign was to assist in covering Johnny's rising medical costs. 
During the campaign, the camaraderie of the entertainment sector, as well as the profound passion that so many people had for Johnny, were brought to light. A great number of admirers were taken aback when they learned that a celebrity such as Johnny would require financial aid. Yet, the fact of the matter was that his net worth at the time of his death was far lower than many people had anticipated. His funds, which were estimated to be somewhere about $500, zero, zero, were quickly emptied as a result of the exorbitant expense of medical treatment. Alzheimer's illness progressively destroyed not just his memory, but also his financial resources, leaving his family worried about the future. This is a common occurrence among people who are afflicted with Alzheimer's disease. The success of the GoFundMe effort, however, was not just due to the amount of money raised. This exemplified the deep influence that Johnny had on the people who were watching him perform. It was made very apparent by Paul Peterson that the campaign was about more than just financially supporting the cause. A cherished individual who had given happiness to a great number of people's lives was the focus of this rallying cry, a demonstration of Johnny's ability to maintain relationships with his audience and friends throughout his career was the outpouring of love and support that he received from them. Due to the progression of Johnny's Alzheimer's disease, he finally required specialist care which resulted in a challenging move to a facility that specializes in memory care. Charlotte continued to be a continuous presence in his life, ensuring that he felt loved and connected to others. Despite the difficulties that he was experiencing, their connection, which had been established over many years of shared experiences and profound affection, emerged as a guiding light of resilience throughout this trying period. Johnny Crawford who was 75 years old at the time of his death on April 29th. 20 Don Ray Toon went away tragically. Alzheimer's disease, COVID-19, and pneumonia were the causes of his death, which was caused by complications. The announcement signified the conclusion of an era for his followers, who had grown up with him via his songs and through his television appearances. However, even in his latter years, Johnny continued to be a well-liked figure, and he was surrounded by the love and support of Charlotte, his friends, and his admirers. When Charlotte thought about his dying, she characterized it as a time that was both bitter and sweet. Even though she was devastated by the news of his passing, she took solace in the fact that his battle with the illness had been won and that he had passed away without any pain or suffering. Not only did Johnny leave behind a legacy as a gifted actor and singer, but he also left behind two stepchildren. Brenda and Jamie, who had become a treasured part of his life. It was a credit to Johnny's character that he confronted the challenges of Alzheimer's disease with dignity and grace. His fight against the disease was a testament to his courage. The love and support of his family and friends remained unwavering despite all that happened to him. This is a reflection of the profound ties that he had cultivated throughout his life. As we reflect on the extraordinary trip that Johnny Crawford has taken, it is abundantly evident that he has given happiness to a great number of people's lives. What do you think of the life and legacy of Johnny Crawford? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. We would love to hear from you. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more interesting updates. Thank you and see you in the next video.